Whenever you want to create soft transition between two images, you can always use a pixel mask and use the gradient tool on that mask. So I have two images here. Let me just show you side by side these two. So I'm just going to choose the window, arrange, tile all vertically. Well, tile two up a vertical option. And then I'm just going to press tab. So you can see both of these images side by side. So I would like to put these on top of each other and then create a very nice soft transition between them. So the way I can do that is by using the move tool and drag and drop one of the images on top of the other one. If I hold down shift, it will align these two uh, canvases to each other. So the edges of the layers will be aligned, but the content is not necessarily aligned because as you can see, if I turn this layer on and off, there's still a slight difference between the two images. There's a manual way to align these two images and an automatic way as well. Let me show you first the manual way. I can reduce the opacity of this layer here on the top by just clicking here on opacity and drag it to the left like that. And then if I zoom closer, I can move this building closer where it will fit onto more onto the other one. But I can see that even the size is not exactly the same. So this image probably has to be resized to match the other image so i not only have to move it around but also resize it and maybe even rotate it around but as i can see now it matches much closer so let's see if i turn this back the opacity to 100 percent and then i turn the layer off and back on i can see it's much closer match now now i might need to just rotate it a little bit around once again i can change the opacity or i can change the blend mode as well so for example if we uh, switch to like screen mode that will also help us to see uh, the difference and i can move these around uh, i mean use the free transform tool and uh, just rotate the layers and move them around a bit but even then you will find it quite difficult to match the two images together completely. So once again, I just switch back to normal mode and let's see the difference between two, the two images. Now it's almost perfect and I would be able to use the gradient already. And actually I'm going to show it to you in this case. And then I will show you also how to do this uh, alignment automatically. So all I need to create is a mask on this layer, which is on the top. So I just add the mask. You can click on this icon here on the bottom. That's the add mask. And once you have that, you can select the gradient tool. And if it's set to black and white, that's the default, by the way, you can always select that, the first one. And it's set to linear mode. So that's the linear gradient. Once again, that's the default one. Then you can click and drag over the image to create a transition. So you can see now we have a transition from the image at the bottom to the image on the top. And that gradient is also visible here in the uh, thumbnail. And we can always override this. So we can uh, drag another line from right to left. And then we will have the inverse. So we will see the bottom layer on the right and then the other layer on the left. I can also do another gradient starting from the bottom and going up. Then we will see again the bottom layer at the bottom of the canvas and the layer on top on the top part of this layer. And what I can also use is a keyboard shortcut if I want to quickly inverse this. By pressing Command or Control I, I can again very quickly inverse uh, the, the mask itself. And that will give me the uh, opposite visibility of the layers. And this is where you can see that the alignment is not perfect. Here on the wheel, we can see that uh, we have a little bit of misalignment. So what else can I do instead of uh, doing the manual setup? I'm just going to go back a couple of steps and show you when we have the two layers on top of each other, uh, the way I just brought them in, we can make sure that there's no background layer. So by double clicking on the background layer, I created a normal layer from it. Now I select these two layers and go to the edit menu and choose auto align layers. I select that, I keep it on auto and I just click on OK. 
and as soon as I let that go I can see there's already a perfect alignment even though the colors are different and the whole mood of the two images are different Photoshop still managed to align them to each other okay so now I can just use the crop tool and just make a selection in which we have both of the images visible actually I have to crop it a little bit further on this part so crop it until there and then we can have a look and now just to repeat what we did before I'm going to add that mask onto this layer on the top select the gradient tool with pressing G on the keyboard checking if I have the default setup for the gradient tool and yes I have it so now I can create my gradients from any direction and I can create this effect over and over again I can even create diagonal effects from any direction and uh, it's just a very simple and easy way to create these nice soft transitions between images another thing that you can do in Photoshop is to use type as a clipping mask it's a very simple technique and I'm sure you've seen it before but I wanted to still mention it because we are talking about ways of using masks so once you use the type tool and enter something like uh, skyline in this case that's what I'm going to use and set it up the way you want it to look like in my case I'm going to use a different font so I'm just going to choose uh, from my fonts something that's a little bit more big and uh, bulky like this one uh, it's the intro font I'm just going to position it somewhere here in the middle actually let, let me just make it a little bit even bigger plus I'm going to select the text and use alt left arrows until I have them the characters closer to each other apart from the eye which is too close and this is called kerning when you align the text and uh, shift them around a bit so the Y can be joined there but the I should be still separate just to make it easier to read and now I can make the whole text a little bit even bigger so something like that it looks quite good and uh, now all I need to do is to double click on my background layer to turn it into a normal layer and then drag it on top of the text and then Alt click between the two layers here when you hold down Alt or Option and hover over the edge between the two layers in the layers panel you will see the clipping mask icon and once you click you create the clipping mask now just to see it better what we have on our text I'm just going to create another layer which I put below these two layers and I fill it in with black or we can fill it in with white as well uh, or we can also fill it in with 50% gray if I press shift backspace I can choose from these options so black white or 50% gray let's just keep it with 50% gray for now and uh, I would like to show you that you can always move the image around so selecting the image layer you can move that up and down and you can also move the text around so uh, keep the image in place and just move the text around and the best thing is that we can still edit the text so we can click and change the text or uh, just change the kerning on it for example so it's still completely editable so that's the way you combine clipping mask with typography in Photoshop I often get the question that is it worth using both a pixel and a vector mask on the same layer is there any point of doing that and of course there is a point of doing that in some cases of course in most cases you will probably be able to get away with using only one of them but in other cases you can combine these two different type of masking techniques together to get the best result in case I want to get rid of the background of this tree so I want to mask it out from its original background together with its trunk and a little bit of grass around it then I would probably combine pixel and vector masks techniques together so I would use the pen tool uh, to define this crisp sharp edges of the trunk and I would use color range on a pixel mask to separate the leaves of the tree and the branches from the background 
So let me show you how I would do it. And of course, in most of the cases in Photoshop, this is not the only way or the best way to do it. I just simply wanted to show you an example where I combine the two masking techniques on one layer. So I have my layer here and I'm going to uh, add a mask, which is going to be my pixel mask. And I can then click on color range to start creating uh, a mask. So I clicked on color range here in the properties panel. And as you can see, I already have quite a good selection of the tree, uh, but I can always shift click on details just to increase uh, the reach of this mask. But once I'm happy with it, I can just simply click on OK. So that created uh, the pixel mask, which I can always check by alt clicking on that. So here I can see it and I alt click on it again just to switch back to normal mode. I'm going to create a layer below this layer and fill that in with white. And then I'm going to select my pixel mask again and use uh, the brush tool to quickly draw over these details, which I don't need in my um, isolation. So I just use the brush tool and draw with black onto the pixel mask. And that way I can quickly get rid of these details. But now I can focus on the trunk because as you can see, the color range didn't make a good selection on that. So what I'm going to do is switch the colors of my brush tool and pressing X, I will get the white to become my foreground color. And with that, I can draw over these parts here around the trunk. Now, I would be able to spend a bit more time and make sure that my um, brush follows accurately the edges of the branch or maybe I could combine other tools as well into this workflow but I just want to keep it simple and I'm going to use the pen tool so I just as you can see touched up a little bit around uh, these areas because it was a little bit messy in some parts and now I can create my vector mask so I'm going to use another mask by clicking on the icon again. I will add a vector mask and in my vector mask, I can uh, use the pen tool, for example. And what I need is the subtract front shape because I would like to take away those parts from the background that I can still see around the trunk. So I'm going to choose that option, zoom a little bit closer, and I'm just going to simply draw over these details by using the pen tool, first starting close to the uh, trunk and then I just finish it like that. So that's one side and then I can go on to the other side again, following the trunk closely and then here in the grass part, I can be a bit more uh, clumsy around those parts. And then if I zoom out, you can see we have a much better detail. So we can always check what we achieved with the vector uh, mask. If I shift click on it, we can see how we removed that part and uh, made it better around the trunk. And we can shift click on the other mask, which is the pixel mask, which made um, or separated the branches and the leaves from the background. And as you can see here in these parts, I still see through some of the parts which should be uh, covered properly in the mask. While in these cases, what we can always do is to select that uh, pixel mask, switch to the brush tool, and just make sure we draw over these parts uh, with the black color. And of course, we will see a couple of uh, sky details showing up again, which we can again filter out. But by using these two type of masks together, we can really concentrate on what we actually need. Uh, fine little soft details, usually better to do in a pixel mask, while sharp, clean edges, uh, curves uh, are better to do in a vector mask. And this was just an example of combining these two techniques together in one layer. We already discussed that using vector mask is the best to create crisp and sharp edges and follow curved uh, lines like uh, to isolate objects from their background. But I would like to show you an example for that. So. Most of you probably would just simply use the quick selection tool in cases like this and try to make a selection uh, of the uh, car, sports car, and then see how it looks. And then obviously make it uh, or 
just refine it on some parts where you need to but believe me this will never be as good as using the pen tool so if I would set this into a pixel mask uh, even after refining some of the edges these nicely curved edges will always be a bit pixelated even if you have a very high resolution image so instead of using a pixel mask in these cases I recommend to use a vector mask with the pen tool so what I'm going to do is delete the layer mask and I'm going to select the pen tool and I'll show you how to use it uh, effectively so what you can first of all select is the rubber band option so if you turn that on you will be able to see your curves even before actually placing them down plus when you create curves you can hold down space to move the anchor points around while you are actually drawing them so that way these using these two techniques will make it much faster to work with curves and whenever you want to uh, get rid of an open handle point like this you just simply need to alt click on the last anchor point so that means you will turn that point into a corner point and the smooth point into a corner point and then you can continue working like here as well I'm going to alt click again just to be able to follow this shape here on the top so this is the way I usually work and if I have to make any changes to a, an anchor point while I'm still working I can hold down command which will switch temporarily to the direct selection tool and I can move points around like this one I can move a bit closer to the edge and then when I just come back here I can continue drawing still so again this point here I can command click or control click on PC make sure the handle doesn't intersect or overlap the car itself because then the next curve segment will be uh, going into uh, the car so I have to make sure that this curve segment covers uh, the top of the car properly and then now because the handle is in uh, a good direction I can continue drawing another curve and then again I can just simply draw this part here on the top come down and after this point it's just a matter of time uh, to finish drawing around this shape generally what is good to keep in mind is to use the least amount of anchor points possible so try to always cover as much as you can with uh, two anchor points I mean a distance between two anchor points so as you can see I always try to uh, just cover big distances instead of adding loads of little anchor points and as you can see with this faster version of my editing we already finished the selection and once you are ready you can simply turn this into a vector mask by right clicking on it and choose create vector mask and if you have to uh, invert a vector mask that's very simple you just have to change uh, the options here instead of subtract front shape choose combine shape and then we can see how the vector mask is so much better than using pixel masks for for selections like this there's other advantages of using a pixel mask than just to simply use a brush on it or a gradient because we can also use custom brushes or any type of different brush tip shapes and use those on the pixel mask itself to create interesting effects so let me show this on this image I'm going to add the mask first of all then I select the brush tool and instead of using the default brush tip shape I'm going to select a custom brush tip shape for now so maybe I'm going to select one of these text brushes and I'm going to use black to draw over it so I can add several versions of this text and now we actually see through the image but if I invert this mask so I press command or control I then we will only see the image uh, through this text so if I create another layer and fill that in with uh, white or black we will be able to see through this uh, mask and see the original image with that I can always clear the mask itself by pressing alt backspace that will fill it in with black 
as that's my foreground color. And then using the brush tool, pressing X, I can switch to white color and I can choose any other custom brushes. So I have these smoke brushes as well. And to quickly switch between these custom brushes, I can use the full stop and comma. So that's what I'm going to do. And as you can see, I just add a couple of different smoke brushes and that creates this interesting effect in this image. If I alt click on the mask itself, you can see how it looks. Once again, if I alt click on it again, we'll see its effect on the image. So it's like seeing through the smoke uh, and see the skyline through that. There are several websites where you can download free uh, brushes for Photoshop, but one of them I prefer to use is called brusheasy.com. Even if you have a vector mask, you can still go into uh, the properties panel and find the density and feather options there. So if I reduce the density, we will see more of the original background, but it still gives us that feel that we separated the car from its background. So it's more prominent than its original background, but we can always play around with density and uh, that's a completely non-destructive uh, editing on the mask itself. And the same thing we can do with the edges of our mask, we can soften the edges by using feathering. So that will again show a little bit more of the original background. But if we decide to again have the sharp edges, we can just reduce feathering back to uh, zero pixels. There's more things that you can do with the adjustments on a mask once you created it using the properties panel. It's not only the feather and density, but there's also the mask edge option, which I would like to show you. And it's specifically useful when you have to work with more difficult selections, like selecting hair, for example. Now, first of all, I have to isolate this lady from the background. And I can do that in many different ways. I can uh, use the quick selection tool and draw over her as one of the preferred ways to do this. And then I can later use the uh, mask edge to refine the edge itself. So let's just have a look at this, how it looks once I made a selection like that, which covers everything that I need inside the selection. And then I turn this into a mask, which is going to be a pixel mask. And on that pixel mask, I can use the mask edge option. So once I click on that, I can choose from the view options and I can decide whether I want to see my selection on white or on transparency or uh, see it as overlay or marching ends. In this case, probably best is to choose black. Now, there are a couple of parts here which I didn't uh, make the selection properly. But what I want to focus on is on the top of the head because there we can see how sloppy our selection is and pixelated. And that's what I would like to just improve. So one of the best options is the edge detection smart radius option. Once you select it, you also have to increase the radius. And the higher you increase it, the more sophisticated the selection can be or the improvement of the selection will be. So if I increase it even further up, we will see it will get so much better already. And by just pressing on show original, we can see the difference. So that's already a big improvement, but we can also use the shift edge option if we still feel like there's a little bit of leftover uh, along the edges, or if you feel like there's too much deleted, we can drag shift edge onto the right. So I can keep it somewhere here maybe. And then just to recolor those details there, we can also use the decontaminate colors and maybe set that up all the way to 100%. So once again, let's see before and after, can see the edges are already so much better, but it's not necessarily the best setup. So we can always play around with these options. Plus we can also use the uh, brush we have here called the refine radius tool with which we can draw over uh, edges and just make sure that the selection is following these edges. So in some cases we might not have the best uh, selection in the beginning and then we can always refine that with this tool. In my case, it doesn't make much difference. So I'm going to just leave it 
as it is maybe reduce the radius a little bit more so once again let's have a look before using the refine mask and after uh, the refine masks effect so I can click on OK and then we can see it will update our mask but whenever you use the mask edge you will probably have a new mask so we can see the original mask by alt clicking on that and then alt clicking on the new mask to see how it improved our selection Continuing from the previous part where we created a selection and we used the uh, mask edge to refine the edges on top of her head, we can uh, also make sure that these parts are not visible. So we will refine the selection even more. And we are going to use a tool called Quick Mask. Now, Quick Mask is a very effective way to make a quick selection and then refine it or use it for anything else in Photoshop later on. So instead of making a selection, let's say with the rectangle tool and trying to select these parts which we want to change or use the lasso tool and again just draw over these uh, details, what I prefer to do is to press Q and enter the quick mask uh, mode or you can always click on this icon here at the bottom as well and then use a simple brush just a normal brush like this and draw over these details so we need to draw over it with black I'm going to just draw over these details wherever I see something which should be uh, improved like that part and then here on the right as well I'm just going to draw over it quickly and draw over this detail here as well like that and maybe a little bit more white here on that side now if I press Q again this turns into a selection but I might need to invert this selection because at the moment is actually these parts are not selected because that's the way I use the the colors on my quick mask so I just press Command or Control Shift I to invert my selection which you can always find from the select menu and once you did that, that means we have now these parts selected. So we have a refined selection of the areas we would like to improve. And from this, we can actually create another selection by using Select Color Range, which is restricted already to the areas inside this selection. So I just clicked on the white areas and we already have a really good selection of the parts we need to get rid of we can always change the fuzziness we can make it a little bit more softer around the edges or more crisp or sharp around the edges I'm going to keep it somewhere here in the middle and then I click on OK again and you can see now the selection is actually following those areas very closely which we need to turn into transparency and now I can click on my mask and fill that in with black or we can also use this on a separate mask so instead of using the same mask that we created earlier we can create a group and put this layer into that group and apply the selection as a second layer mask onto this group which will also affect the same layer so if I click on the add layer mask it creates that mask and all I need to do is to invert that by using command or control I so invert the colors of the mask and as you can see now we have two masks affecting the same layer and not a uh, pixel and vector mask in this case two pixel masks so that's a clever way of adding more than one pixel mask onto the same layer so if I zoom a little bit further out we can see we didn't change anything else apart from these uh, details that I wanted to get rid of and of course at this stage I can still choose mask edge from the uh, properties panel and I can still use the smart radius for example on this newly selected areas so I can increase that or use shift edge and just make even more adjustments to uh, this mask and that's the good thing about having a separate pixel mask that I won't make any changes to the original mask I'm only going to affect these details here
If you create a mask, that means the original details that you hide will still be visible once you turn the mask off or change it. So in this case, I have this quick and dirty selection of the butterfly, but if I shift click on the mask, we can still see the original details of the background are there. So if I shift click on it again, I can hide it or enable the mask again and hide the, the background. Now what you can do if you don't like working with masks is still using an option which is quite similar to masking and it's called lock transparency. So if I right click on this option here, I mean right click on the mask and choose apply layer mask, then I will get a result where I have the background completely deleted. In that case, you have an image uh, with the butterfly and a completely transparent background. Now, in these cases, if you lock the transparency, which is the option here, uh, means you can start drawing over this image with any type of color. For example, this uh, black color here. If I start drawing over it, it will keep the edges the same as my original selection and it will just fill that color in to uh, the image itself. So if I want to uh, just cover up my sloppy selection and uh, fill these parts in with black to make it look a little bit better and save my uh, selection, then I can do that by using lock transparency. Now, I wouldn't recommend to do this because there's already two things that uh, are wrong in this example. So lock transparency is a cool feature and it's definitely useful, but not really for selections. I just wanted to showcase it with this example, but let me also show you how to do all this non-destructively. So I can always go back a couple of steps and have the original mask there. And st instead of rasterizing uh, the mask, I would create a separate layer, an empty layer, an old click between these two layers, which will create a clipping mask, and then start drawing along the edges. That means I don't lose any details from the original image, and I still have the same effect. So, look, transparency is quite similar of using clipping masks and masks together, but it means that you will change the content of the actual layer. So if you draw on the layer while having lock transparency, it, it will make sure yet that you don't draw over the transparent parts, but it will still change the details of the actual contents of the layer. So it's a very useful thing to know about, but only use it when it makes sense and you don't lose any detail that you might need in the future. And last but not least, I would like to show you a couple of useful keyboard shortcuts, which you can use together with masks. One of them is alt clicking on a mask, which will show you the mask view in which you can work with the brush tool or gradient tool. And then alt clicking on the mask switches back to normal view. Shift clicking on mask will turn it off or turn it back on. And the alt shift clicking on a mask will turn the mask into a quick mask view. So it's actually um, creates like a sort of selection. And uh, you can also make a selection by clicking with command or control on the thumbnail. And that actually turns uh, your mask already into a selection. So let me do that on the other selection here or the other mask and we can see it. And you can even combine these uh, techniques together. So you can have a selection based on a mask like this one, the bottom one. And if I hold down command and all together, that means I'm going to remove this mask from the other one. So command alt together will remove. So that means now I made a selection from two of my masks. And another option is holding down all three modifiers, command or control, alt and shift together, and that will create an intersection using uh, two different masks. So once again, if I have, let's say, this mask selected and I hold down Command, Alt, Shift and click on the other one, I will get an intersection of these masks, which is the perfect selection for this image. So if I would use that on uh, an original version of the image, which is here at the bottom, then I should get uh, the same result as these two masks together. So let me just turn that off 
and we can see that it's actually the combination of those two masks together in one. And that's all I wanted to show you in this uh, tutorial. I hope you learned a couple of useful things about masking, maybe some things that you haven't seen before, and uh, hopefully these will help you in your work in the future. So thanks a lot for your attention, and see you next time here on Touch Plus.